Our next guest says this could be the best sweet spot for IPOs in almost a decade. Today, a trio of companies are expected to make their Wall Street debut. Savers Value Village, uh, the largest for-profit thrift store operator in the U.S. and Canada, priced 22 million shares at $18 a share, above the estimated range. Kodiak Gas Services priced 16 million shares at $16 a share. And Fidelis Insurance is seeking to raise about $300 million at the midpoint of its range. Joining us to discuss uh, the IPO market, Tom Sosnoff, Tasty Trade co-founder. And a lot of things, I don't know, air travel, hotels, uh, vacations, there's a lot of pent-up demand. We understand that. Is there, why would this be a good time for IPOs uh, when rates have gone up 500 basis points? And it, it doesn't seem like a great time and hasn't been. Why is that going to change, Tom? Oh, you know, Joe, there's so much speculative demand. And, you know, right now there's not that much stuff to speculate on. So I think the IPO market, it's been toxic for so long. I mean, you couldn't find a better time. You know, if you're thinking about going, taking a company public, you want to do it when the market's most toxic. And right now, I don't know why you'd want to borrow money at, you know, do a debt offering with much higher rates. I'd much rather float stock. And especially in a competitive environment, you know, this is the first time companies have had leverage over the, you know, financial service companies. So I, I kind of think it's a great time and probably the best time, like you said, in the, in the past decade to take a company public right now. You know, you're coming out of a toxic environment into a really healthy speculative market. I mean, you'd be going from famine to feast. We've had Adina on more than a few times. It's been like a wasteland yeah. for, for IPOs. Uh, well, I mean, the, and the, at, at the big board. Yeah, I mean, the SPAC, you know, the, the yeah, that whole SPAC debacle, the whole SPAC unwind really took the IPO market back about probably, you know, whatever, five, seven years. And it's I think at this point now, we are finally seeing a lot of demand. I mean, we're seeing a lot of speculative demand and we're not seeing a lot of new products out there. So I think the IPO stuff, especially, you know, in the derivatives marketplace on the option side, there is a lot of demand for new products. And I think people want to see new companies. And I also think, you know, there's. It's it's just a great competitive environment for companies to go public because there's just not that many. Well, we won't have it used to be you do a dot com. And then for a while, it was there was a biotech uh, acronym that people use. Is it going to be we're going to see the the end of this will be the A.I. Every company that comes public is going to have A.I. Uh, in, well, in let, the business plan. Let's hope not. I, I think that that's exactly what we don't want to see right now. I think that I think. There's a certain group of tech companies that I don't think it's the ideal time to go public with. I think it's the, I think if you're really looking at the group that's probably going to do the best in an, in this IPO market, it's probably going to be a bunch of small caps that have moved around to a really strong free cash flow type of, you know, um, uh, type of balance sheet. And I think the market's going to like it. I mean, so far in the last few IPOs that have come out, the market's been really strong behind them. I just think that that when there's not a lot of stuff and you're coming out of a toxic environment, uh, the market just treats you right. It's a it's the pure contrarian play, and I like it. Tom, you're mentioning the speculative nature of the market. I mean, you can take a look at Carvana, which is a 500 percent year to date. Sure. Um, the, the increased use and demand for for zero data expiration options in your part of the world, Tom. And so I'm wondering yeah. what, what you know, how <coughs> you gauge where we are in the markets right now with the Nasdaq up 30 percent. Are we in a speculative sort of fueled bubble right now? Well, Melissa, I think that over the last pretty much over the, since since the beginning of the pandemic, I think the market has changed a lot. And I think people, the way they perceive trading and investing, everybody has shortened their time frame. And I think we saw, you know, through the throughout the last couple of years, there is a ginormous speculative demand hitting below, just lying below this market and waiting to pounce on stuff. And we just haven't had a lot of stuff to do. I mean, there hasn't been a lot of IPOs. There haven't been a lot of deals. And so the market's just been, and, and one of the speculative areas, which, have been, which was digital assets, has really just kind of dropped off the map for regulatory reasons. So I think the marketplace is sitting on a lot of cash. Like I said, it's a very competitive environment right now for you know companies that want to go public because there's just not that many of them. And I just think there's a lot of cash on the sidelines. And I think it's the and I think companies for the first time have a lot of leverage over the investment banks.